Hey guys, and a very, very warm welcome back to What's For Tea, and I hope you're all having a brilliant day so far. Or if you're new, a very warm welcome to you as well, because I know there's been quite a lot of new faces over the last couple of weeks, so thank you very much for popping over and checking us out, and welcome to our wee corner of YouTube. Well, I said the other day, you know, what, would, what should I make next? The options were meatballs and marinara sauce, say that five times fast, or a meatball and gravy, onion gravy it was. And at the time of writing, you know, the gravy option had a massive 74% of the vote, so here it is. They were absolutely delicious and highly recommended. You know, if you never ever end up making the meatballs, give the sauce a go because it's so, so tasty, incredibly rich, and certainly not for you if you're trying to go on a bit of a diet because, you know, it's quite fatty, there's quite a lot of butter and cream, but, you know, that just makes it absolutely delicious. So, yeah, try the sauce. Again, I've listed everything that I've used down in the description bar down below. So if you want to give it a go, just look down there and you'll find everything that you're going to need. Right, so this is what we're using today. First of all, I've got two large eggs. I've got half a teaspoon of sugar. I've got some salted butter. Now, this is just for frying, so it's up to you how much you use. But I've used six tablespoons or thereabout. You'll need 60 grams of fine dried breadcrumbs. 100 ml of whole milk, one pound of pork mince and one pound of beef mince. Now it's quite, you know, it's quite um, important that your mince has quite a high, a high fat content. Anything 20 or above is ideal because you want them nice and juicy and moist and you don't want them dry and falling apart. So it's quite important you get mince with quite a high fat content. We've also got 750 ml of beef stock, 110 ml of double cream, three tablespoons of plain flour, one large onion, which I very finely diced, a pinch of cayenne pepper, a teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and you'll also need a wee splash of Worcester sauce and some salt and pepper to taste. So right, let's move on and see what we do next. The first thing you want to do is get your slow cooker on. Set it to medium high or medium, depends what kind of setting you've got. I like to pop a wee bit of water in mine just to heat it up and you just throw that out when you're ready to use it. The first thing you want to do is add a knob or a couple of knobs of butter to your pan and then add in half of your onions once it's melted. To that you just want to add a wee pinch of salt. and just give it a good fry on a low heat for about five minutes. You just want to soften these up. So once your onions have had the time that they need, you can start making your meatballs. So to a large bowl, pop in your softened onions and then your milk and then your eggs and then your breadcrumbs. You just want to give that a good mix together. Now I believe this is a, called a slurry, if I'm not mistaken. And then you can pop in your spices and then some cracked black pepper, or you can use white pepper if you prefer, and a good pinch of salt. Just give that a good mix together as well. And then you can go ahead and start adding your mince, so your minced beef and your minced pork there. And you just want to combine everything till it's thoroughly combined. You can get in there with your hands if you like, it's up to you. I usually use disposable gloves, you know, I'm going to be doing this by, by hand, but I haven't got any, so I'm just using a spoon. So just keep going and stirring until it's lovely and smooth and well combined. Then you want to get it out of your bowl and into some plastic wrap or cling film and you want to refrigerate this for at least an hour because you want all the flavours to come out and obviously your, your breadcrumbs to expand and everything will just come together beautifully. I gave mine a couple of hours but minimum of an hour I would say. So 
So this was me two hours later. And she went to pull it out of the fridge and get your plastic wrap off. And now you want to start, you know, shaping your meatballs. So I'm using this wee scoop. It's actually a measuring spoon, but it's absolutely ideal for this. This is just the one tablespoon size and you get just the right of, you know, just the right amount. They're lovely wee meatballs, but you can make them any size you like. If you're going to be doing them this size, you know, you're going to get about 30 <laughs> meatballs out of this mixture. Again, the bigger you do them, you know, the less you're going to get. I didn't use all of my mixture. I'm going to use this for something else during the week. So there's five of us having this, so we are going to, I've allowed four each because, you know, they're, they're quite hefty. So now you just want to go around all your meatballs and make them nice and smooth. So just have a wee bowl of water at the side. Make sure your hands are nice and wet or damp and you'll find this really, really easy to smooth them out. And that's that, easy peasy. Like I said, that wee measuring spoon is absolutely ideal for this. Perfect size for us. So you want to use the same pan that you fried your onions in. Pop another wee bit of butter in and we're going to start frying our meatballs. Now we're not cooking these all the way through, we just want to get a good bit of colour on there. So you want this sort of medium high heat to sort of, you know, sear them in a way. Pop them in the pan and then give them a wee turn once you think they've had long enough on one side. Yeah, this is what I'm drinking. <laughs> we don't have a Starbucks near to us, so this is as close as I can get without an hour and a half drive. So yeah, like I said, just give them a wee turn over. And once they've got a good bit of colour on all sides, you can just set them to the side. And then you're going to go on and do your sauce. So like I said, you're not looking to cook these all the way through because they are going to be cooking in the slow cooker. It's just for colour. So lift your meatballs out, set them to the side, just pop them onto a plate. Use the same pan again, pop another wee bit of butter in and then your plain flour. This is only three tablespoons of plain flour and about two tablespoons of butter. You're going to make a, it's R-O-U-X, it's called a roux. This is just the base for many, many sauces, is flour and butter. So you just want to stir these together until they're well combined. And once your flour is all through your butter, just let this cook for about four minutes, four or five minutes to let the flour cook out, to take the sort of raw edge off of the flour. And then you can start adding in your beef stock. Just do it wee bit by wee bit until it's all in there. I find using a whisk for this really, you know, it's excellent because you're not going to get any lumps or anything. And once your beef stock is in there and it's thoroughly mixed in, you can pop your cream in. This is 100ml of double cream. You just want to mix that through as well. This sauce is absolutely to die for, it really is. And then you can pop in a half a teaspoon of sugar and then your pepper and then a wee dash of Worcester sauce as well. And then the rest of your onions. So you want to increase your heat now and you want to get this up to a simmer, guys. So just simmer this for a few minutes and that'll be you ready for your slow cooker. So go over to your slow cooker and I've just thrown my water out. I just like to do this, like I say, just to heat the, you know, heat the crock pot up. Now I pop half of my sauce in and then the meatballs on top of that. 
and then the rest of the sauce on top of them. Make sure to scrape down the sides and everything because there's tons of flavour there. And you just want to give it a good stir through. Just make sure all of your meatballs are coated and mines were submerged. <laughs> we love tons of sauce. This sauce is lovely. So just pop your lid on and you want to give this between four and five hours on a medium heat. It depends on the size of your meatballs, you know. The bigger your meatballs, the longer they're going to take. Mine took five hours because I've got quite a lot in there. So this is me five hours later and they're ready. Oh, I wish you could smell this, I really do. So creamy and so rich and so naughty. Definitely not one for the slummers out there. But like I say, it's been a long, long time since we've had meatballs and gravy. It's not something we have very often. And I think because of that, we thoroughly enjoyed this. Like I say, I've allowed, you know, between four and five per person. But you will get 30 meatballs of this size from the ingredients that I've told you. So we've just had some mashed potato and then popped the meatballs on top with some extra gravy. Oh my goodness, it was so good. <laughs> so, so good. And that was that. I mean, it is a bit faffy. It's, you know, you've got quite a few ingredients in there, but it's well, well worth it. And of course, some veggies on the side. So that was it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed eating it. <laughs> But please do give it a go. Like I say, it's, it's a bit faffy. It's quite time consuming. There are quite a few ingredients involved, but far, far superior to anything that you'll buy ready-made from the supermarket. So yeah. And if you don't make anything, make the sauce, please. <laughs> so thank you very much for popping over again, seeing what's going on. And until I see you next time, which is probably going to be meals of the week which i'm doing just now so that should be up in the next hour hour and a half so hopefully i'll see you back for that so until then guys take care of yourselves and i'll see you soon bye for now bye now